<clears throat> Hello, everybody. Wolfang here. Today is Wednesday, hump day. Yay. December the 6th. That yeah, was, we had sun on and off today. It wasn't too bad here in Cincinnati. I think my wife had a more entertaining day than I did. Our uh, bathroom ceiling's got a nice hole in it now. The, the heating system we have here is water. So the heaters are against the wall. The water is heated up. It's, you know, extremely hot. But uh, the lady upstairs, her heater in the bathroom leaked. So it was coming through our ceiling yesterday. Why the landlord didn't come in and check the uh, ceiling, I have no idea. But they're going to have to tear the entire ceiling out of our bathroom. And supposedly they're going to do this tomorrow. Anyway, so let's get on with the spam report. I found a few articles, but this one really caught my eye because it's science and it has something to do with the sun. So it states, and this was uh, 18 hours ago, gaping hole in the sun bigger than 60 Earths just blasted solar wind right at us. So there's the picture of the sun. Kind of cool. A giant hole in the atmosphere of the sun more than five times larger than the diameter of Jupiter is unleashing a powerful solar wind that's blasting through the solar system. It's called a coronal hole, and it's currently rotating away from Earth. But a few days ago, from its position straddling the equator, it was pointed right at us, directing a stream of particles in Earth's directions. Now, I've been seeing a lot of articles about, you know, I, I did an article, I think maybe a week ago about the sun. The result was nothing to be alarmed about, <clears throat> a mild solar storm, but the whole does contribute to a wider pattern of rampant solar shenanigans as we enter solar maximum. The sun has been quite rowdy lately, which is sort of to be expected. Our star goes through activity cycles in which it gets more active with sunspots, solar flares, coronal mass ejections, and coronal holes. This activity escalates to a peak solar maximum before subsiding again towards solar minimum, a period of relative calm and minimal activity. I think it's cool that we got the telescopes and, and all that crap that we can actually look at the sun. This cycle appears to be driven by or coincide with the sun's mag magnetic cycles during which the solar magnetic field reverses po uh, polarity and its north and south poles switch places. This switch appears at solar maximum, which is due to take place sometime in 2024. You probably know about sunspots, solar flares, coronal mass ejections, a sunspot is a temporary spot on the sun where magnetic fields get quite a bit stronger. This results in a cooler, darker, darker, <laughs> darker, I said it again, darker freckle, damn it, on the sun's face. I said darkle. Maybe that's a new word. <laughs> it's a dark freckle. It's a darkle. <laughs> <laughs> My wife's even laughing at me now. <laughs> That's a pretty cool picture, though. Solar flares and coronal mass ejections are eruptions, often associated with sunspots, that are caused by a giant release of energy that occurs due to magnetic, magnetic field lines snapping and reconnecting. 
a coronal hole, by contrast, is a large region where the solar magnetic field opens up. They can't be seen in optical light like sunspots, but when we look in ultraviolet wavelengths, we see huge dark patches that are dimmer than their surrounding surroundings because they are cooler. Because of the magnetic field is open, the wind that constantly blows from the sun can escape more readily. The result is a more powerful gust, gusting of solar particles and plasma out into the solar system, following around any planets that may be in their path. The current hole, which at times, uh, at time of writing, has almost rotated away to the far side of the sun. It's a big, what's that, big N? Huh. As per space weather, it measures around 800 million kilometers, 500,000 or 800,000, 500,000 miles along its longest axis. Jupiter's diameter is around 140,000 kilometers. Earth is 12,742. The hole was facing Earth around the 2nd of December, and the solar wind smacked into us over the course of the uh, 4th and 5th of December. The result, as per the NOAA, was at most a G1 to G2 level solar storm. That's the mildest of the solar storms that can hit us and not much would have been noticeable to most of us. Here's what happens. Particles from the solar wind hit Earth's uh, magnetosphere and get diverted along magnetic field lines to the poles where they are dissipated into the upper atmosphere. There, they interact with uh, atmospheric particles to create an aurora glow, which is pretty nice. The enhanced currents in Earth's inosphere and magnetic sphere can also interfere with power grids, satellite operations, radio communications, and navigation systems. For G1 and G2 level storms, though, the effects are fairly minimal. So there you go. The more powerful solar storms are generated by the coronal mass ejections and flares. A coronal hole is relatively passive. The solar wind is more powerful, but it's not being actively flung outwards with an additional push. A violent coronal mass ejection or flare, by contrast, actively ejects materials outwards. The current solar cycle has already proven to be much stronger than initially expected and is going to continue in this vein for a little while longer. We've already seen some absolutely breathtaking aurora activity this year due to solar eruptions and at much lower latitudes than such light shows usually reach. However, the NOAA has predicted that the maximum sunspot number for the current cycle will be 173. That's below the average maximum of 179 and very far below the highest on record, which was the 19th solar cycle with a maximum of 280, 285 sunspots in March of 1958. Here's hoping we get to see more swirling green skies in the coming months, or months to come, I should say, sorry. Anyway, so for all the science people out there, or people that are into the sun, and also remember, <clears throat> with the sun putting this kind of uh, stuff out, it's, you know, it's your solar flares and stuff, it, it's EMP. So, if you're really into following the science of our solar system, you can, you can follow this all the time. 
but it caught my eye because it said a gaping hole in the sun. Oh my God, we're going to die. And that's for Hudson Valley and we're all going to die Wednesday. <laughs> but anyway, this is Boy Fang. Have a great Wednesday evening. Uh, I, I'm not going to go there. But anyway, blessed be, stay safe. And uh, may the winds be with you. <laughs> I'll, I'll chat with you all later.